Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at Slim SEO. Slim SEO is a free SEO plugin that was first released about two and a half years ago. It is developed by the same team that makes the popular Metabox suite of plugins. I tried out Slim SEO when it was first released and gave the author some feedback. Recently, I got a chance to use it again and noticed that it's become a solid alternative to the monster size SEO plugins that we're all used to using. In this video, I'll do a walkthrough of Slim SEO, take a look at its features and philosophy, and I'll also share some thoughts about its strengths and weaknesses so that you can get a sense of when it makes sense to use it. If we take a look in the WordPress plugin directory, we see that Slim SEO is regularly updated. It has more than 10,000 active installs and about a four and a half star review rating. I took a look in the support forum and noticed that the team is very active in engaging with users and helping them with support questions. If we look at the active install growth, Slim SEO isn't very well known and the growth is pretty flat. I have here a test site that I'm using for testing Slim SEO. You can see I have a number of test articles of dummy content in different categories and I have a custom post type called books. I've got the pro version of the Bloxy theme installed. If we look at the plugins, you can see that I've already installed Slim SEO. When you install it and activate it, you get a new admin menu here off of settings. There are several tabs available. The first tab is for features, and basically you can toggle off the ones that you don't wanna use. And there's a little tooltip next to each one that gives a very small blurb about what it's about. And so you might disable some of these if, for example, like Bloxy Pro has a breadcrumbs option. So if I were using that, then I might want to toggle off the Slim SEO breadcrumbs. Or if you're using a dedicated schema plugin, then you could toggle off the Slim SEO schema and use your dedicated plugin instead. The code tab, this is where you could enter your snippet, say for Google Analytics or your Facebook tracking pixel. Then here are the settings for your homepage or kind of site. This is taken from the site title and I filled this in. And then there's a default Facebook or Twitter image that's used if someone shares a link to your site. There's also a place where you can upload a default Facebook or Twitter image. And the difference between these and the ones for the homepage is this is what's used on your post pages, custom post types. If you happen not to upload a image for social sharing for that article or post. And then if you're using the Facebook or Twitter analytics, you can enter that ID information here. The tools menu, this is where you can migrate your SEO data. And currently it supports migration from Yoast, All-in-One, the SEO framework, or Rank Math. There's no option at the moment to migrate from SEO Press. So those are the settings. And if you've used some of the other SEO plugins, then you'll notice this is quite pared down a lot fewer settings. There's no wizard walking you through making a lot of choices. Basically, these are the defaults. And we'll get some more information about these defaults a little later on when we take a look at the documentation. Okay, if we go and take a look at the editor for a post, we'll notice at the bottom, there's a meta box area here for search engine optimization. And by default, Slim SEO takes the post title and it takes the first bit of content to create the meta title and meta description. And then you can upload a Facebook or Twitter image. And one thing I like is it gives you information about what the suggested links and image sizes are. And if you don't upload an image, then it's going to use that one from the social tab in the Slim SEO settings. And then if you don't want the page or post or content indexed by search engines, then you can click here to hide it from search engine results. And I think this will also exclude it from the sitemap. By the way, it's the same meta box if we look at a custom post type. 
See here we have the same type of meta box here. So it's using just the one schema type, I think for article. Now if we go and take a look at an article and we look at the source code, we see here, these are the open graph tags that are added for Facebook and Twitter. And you can see it's filled in the information. These are the basics that you need for Facebook and Twitter. And if we look at the very bottom of the page output, here we have the LD JSON schema output. I copied this, it's a long string here, a huge string, and it's hard to read. I copied it into my editor. Like I said, it's hard to read. But what you can see is that it has information in the schema about the site, has a breadcrumb list, it has information about the author and the category and the article itself and the featured image. Here's word count and so on. So these are the kinds of things that Google and other search engines are looking for. It's output pretty complete, I'd say, LDJSON data for the post. If we go and take a look at the Slim SEO website, there are two things that I wanted to really focus in on. And I think if you're gonna use Slim SEO, it's worth taking a look at the documentation because this gives you a good sense of the plugin, some things you might not realize just from looking at it in the WordPress admin. For example, if we look at the meta title tag, it tells you what it's using for the home page, site title, site description. For post pages and custom post types, it uses post page title and then site title. And then for everything else, it uses page title, site title. These are defaults and it's going to use those. And while you can override them on a post by post basis, there aren't any settings in the plugin to set defaults to override these. And what Slim SEO has is it has filters for each of those options that you can toggle on or off. If you want to change the defaults, you can use like a code snippets program or write a simple plugin and add these filters. And there's also the option to hide the meta box at the bottom of the edit screen for different WordPress roles. So if there are some users, authors that you don't want to be able to change the SEO settings, you can hide the meta box. If we look at, you know, just kind of going through and looking at some of these things, you know, let's look at the meta description tag. Again, there's a filter that you can use to change the default. So this is one of the reasons why slim SEO is quote unquote slim or lightweight is because it basically is giving you as a default, the configuration option that most people is used, it's most frequently used. And then if you're an advanced user that wants to change it, or you're an SEO expert, you can use the filters to set what makes more sense for you. So some of these things are pretty straightforward, but there are a few other things that I think it's worth mentioning Slim SEO has some auto redirection. This isn't like 404 redirection. It's for the attachment page and to redirect an author page to the home page. If, for example, you only have one author or the author doesn't have any posts. And that's something that you wouldn't realize the plugin is doing behind the scenes if you don't take a look at the documentation. For RSS feed, it recommends you set to summary if you've got it set to full text. And it also adds a link back to your website in the RSS feed. So if some other website is bringing in your feed, then it'll have a link back to the source included in the feed output. Then the schema tag kind of tells you what Slim SEO is doing as a default for the schema. So that's worth understanding. This is that LD JSON data that we were looking at that hard to read bit at the bottom of the page source. So this is worth, I think, looking at just so you're aware of what's going on. 
And, you know, there's the option for the breadcrumbs. Slim SEO does fill in the image alt text. It takes the file name and puts it into the alt text box in the media library. However, it doesn't remove the dashes. Some of the other plugins I've seen that do that remove the dashes. And it creates the XML sitemap and gives you information about that as well as filters. <laughs> Okay, so that's the documentation. Now, there's one other thing it's, that I read in the documentation that I just wanted to point out on the site if you're using Slim SEO. And it's something that's good to do with any SEO plugin you're using, and it might not always be obvious. But that is that Slim SEO is going to use, like in your category archives, it's going to use the description of your category. And often we create categories or custom taxonomies. We don't take the time to put in a description. Or we let the user create it on the fly to add new categories or tags. And the description doesn't get filled out in that case either. So that's something to keep in mind and it's good to fill that out. Now, David Wormsley in the Dynamic WordPress Facebook group, he shared a screenshot showing the file size of downloaded SEO plugins, free ones from the WordPress plugin directory. So I kind of recreated his table, added some information and another SEO plugin. So Slim SEO is also smaller in file size. It's not like Slim isn't just that it goes with sensible defaults and doesn't have a lot of customization options. It's also a small file size, so there's not a lot of bloat. So most of these plugins, like All-in-One SEO, Rank Math, SEO Press, Squirrely SEO, and Yoast, we can see that the file size is in the megabytes. And Slim SEO is only 87 kilobytes. That's really small. That tells you right there that there's not a lot of bloat. The only other one that's noticeably smaller is the SEO framework. And that's been around for a lot longer than Slim SEO. It has 100,000, more than 100,000 active installs. It is bigger than Slim SEO. But if you're looking for something that's lightweight, that might be another one to take a look at. If we go back to the Slim SEO website, I just wanted to point out that they are planning a pro version and they've got currently four features that they're adding to the pro version. A schema builder, which is something that right now it's got the basic schema. The option for link analysis to get reports of internal and external links on your website for link building. Redirection options help handle broken links and 404s, and local SEO if you have a local business. And there's a note here that you can sign up to get informed when that becomes ready. Okay, we've done the walkthrough, and I think you probably have a pretty good idea of what Slim SEO is about. So now for some discussion and conclusions. It seems like these days most SEO plugins are in a feature race to pack as many SEO-related helpers into the post-edit screen as possible. Can these features be useful and help your content rank higher? Absolutely. But if you have one of these feature-rich plugins, do you actually use all of the features? I've experienced being presented with a lot of options and sometimes don't know which to pick. At that point, do you skip that setting and continue the setup or do you stop and do research? Slim SEO takes the approach of going with the conventional defaults and not overwhelming the user with lots of choices. There's something to be said for simplicity. There's a catch-22 in the minds of WordPress site builders. On the one hand, we want everything to be fast and lean, but on the other, we want all of the options and features. Slim SEO is targeted toward those who want to keep it fast and simple. Is Slim SEO too simple? Here are several SEO-related functions that are not included in the free version. Content analysis for readability, advanced schema options, internal link analysis, redirection, local SEO, keyword research, backlink tracking. Four of those features are coming in the pro version, advanced schema options, link analysis, redirection, and local SEO. I would suggest that local SEO could be an option in the free version, and content analysis for readability could be a suggestion to add to the pro list. In my opinion, keyword research and backlink tracking are probably better handled using a dedicated SEO tool. 
If you need and will use one or more of those SEO functions that are not included, then Slim SEO might not be the best choice. Or if you just need one or two of them, perhaps you could use a dedicated plugin or other tool for that purpose, such as, for instance, a redirection plugin or a schema plugin. In the Dynamic WordPress Facebook group, the developer of Slim SEO mentioned that he intends the pro features to be modular. That's the approach his team has taken with the Metabox plugin. Designing software in this way is a slight inconvenience to the user, but it does help to avoid bloat. I think the modular approach makes sense given the emphasis on being lightweight. Everyone knows that quality content is the number one reason that articles rank higher in search engine results. To some extent, I think that the WordPress community is obsessed with SEO, but it surely makes sense to attend to the basics. Slim SEO puts a focus on the basics and doesn't overwhelm the user with a ton of options. Obviously, there will be some users who are SEO experts and want to squeeze as much as possible out of the content, and there will be sites where that's a priority. In these cases, Slim SEO might not be the best choice at least until the pro version is available. However, there are many types of sites, such as brochure sites, one-page resume sites, and so on, where the user's not going to go the extra mile in SEO research, or where clients aren't going to pay attention to advanced options they don't understand. In these types of cases, the free Slim SEO plugin does make sense. Do you agree? Well, that's my overview and review of the Slim SEO plugin. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.